Hi guys, Liam here from Sanctus. Today we're on the streets to talk to some passers-by. Why you may ask? Because next week on the 6th of February is Time to Talk Day, a day that tries to encourage people to talk about their mental health and to try and change lives. Here at Sanctus, we appreciate this day a lot. However, there's one thing that's not being named, and that is that talking is fucking hard. Some people don't know where to start, where to go, who to talk to, or even how to start the conversation. So a good place to start today will be to appreciate that some people haven't even started their mental health journey and don't know how to do that. So we're going to go talk to some people and see what they say. So yeah, we're talking about mental health today. Yep. And the one question simply is, have you spoke about your mental health before? Uh, never. Never. Never, yeah. Since I probably turned 16, never talked about it. Uh, no. No, no I haven't shared it. Have you ever spoke about your own mental health before? Uh, no, never. No. I've, I've questioned it, but I've never actually spoken to someone about it. Um, I think there's like a, maybe a stigma around it. But just because you're always scared of someone saying like, Oh, that sounds dumb or that sounds stupid, if that makes sense. So yeah, I've never spoken about it. Uh, I mean, I just think about it by myself. I don't really, so... You haven't spoken to anyone about Not it? really. No. About yourself? No, I don't. I just keep, I just explode on my own. So it's clear to see that talking about your mental health isn't always easy. When we've just spoke to a few people there, we've got some people who have shared and they were able to share with their family and friends, but there were some people who felt like they couldn't because there was a stigma or they felt shame. And as someone who has shared their mental health story before with certain people, I can promise you one thing, being vulnerable never gets easier, no matter how much more you talk about it. However, bottling something up is not going to be the best option, and that's a promise. If talking about your mental health was easy, we'd all be doing it all the time, there wouldn't be a problem, and we wouldn't be addressing it, and we wouldn't be having a time to talk today. However, telling the stranger on the street, like myself today, is not always going to be the best option, and that's for sure. However, making sure that you do it when you feel comfortable, and when you feel ready, is is definitely the most important thing. Whether this is a family member or friend, or whether this is a teacher, or whether this is your neighbor, or even if this is just on your own and you feel like you wanna write it down or journal it down or film yourself talking about it, just that first interaction and that first touch point talking about your mental health can instantly make you feel lighter and can instantly make you feel a lot better. So we've learned that some people are struggling to talk about their own mental health. So what we've got now is a few clips from the people in the Sanctus HQ who have spoke about the first time that they ever addressed their mental health. And what you'll realize is that some people do it in very different ways and there is a wide range to approach talking about it. The first time I opened up about my mental health and started actually talking about it was actually to myself. So I wrote in a journal and I started writing in a journal. I started sort of opening up about how I was feeling. I remember my first journal entry just said, I feel weird, and that was the first sentence. And then over the coming weeks and months, I continued to journal more and to talk more and to write more and to open up more. And I started to say stuff like, I feel stressed and I feel anxious and that's okay. I feel sad. I don't know what I'm doing with my life. I don't know where I'm going. I had a panic attack today. So I really started to open up to myself and kind of accept that what I was feeling was okay. The first time I ever spoke about my mental health was when I was actually walking along Putney Bridge and I witnessed someone who was really struggling with their mental health and it was actually an individual I didn't know. But seeing someone so publicly struggling really made me sort of reflect and look upon myself and made me realize that I really, really did need help at the time. Strangely, I know people usually speak to sort of family and friends first and the first person I actually spoke to was a police officer. He was incredible. To be honest, he didn't make a huge deal out of it, which was really beneficial for me because in my head, I had spent so long pushing down my feelings and having this sort of cloud of shame around them. He acted like essentially it was the most normal thing in the world and it was nothing for me to be upset about. And that actually then spurred me on to speak to a professional from the NHS, which really started off my journey of working on myself and has sort of been continuing for the past two years. I think the biggest thing for me with, with actually opening up and talking to someone about my mental health is I wish I had done it so, so long ago. I think the most damaging thing for me throughout my whole mental health journey was sitting with that shame for so long. I just feel like if I had spoken to someone, you know, two, three months before any of that had happened, I would have started my recovery a lot sooner and it probably wouldn't have got as severe as it did. For me personally, I found I started thinking more and more about how I thought when I was uh, training quite a lot in athletics and then suddenly went from doing all the training to doing races and felt quite anxious and nervous before a big race. And I spoke to a coach and they said to me that actually what I was experiencing was really normal and actually quite good 
because it meant that the race had some significance and importance and that if I thought about it correctly, it would actually potentially help me in the race. But I had to be able to get over those feelings of butterflies in the stomach and like my heart rate going and my palms being a bit sweaty. So I listened to that and took it on board. And it still was quite hard when it came to the start of the race. And I still felt quite a surge of adrenaline and nervous. But actually having that in mind and then starting the race itself, I suddenly, after a bit of time and getting past that first start part, I felt quite good. So it took a bit of courage to share that. And it is a very low level piece of mental health explanation that I'm giving you, but it just shows you that even sharing something small like that could really make your inner life that little bit more understandable, richer, and help you in what you're trying to do. The first time that I ever really spoke about my mental health and how I was doing, probably when I was about 17, my dad died when I was 12, and it took me a long while to kind of like realize the, the impacts that that had on me. And then on top of, you know, being a teenager like hormones raging around and yeah still life not being kind of as kind as it could be it took me to being at the age of 17 where I was getting like debilitating panic attacks I couldn't leave the house without getting really severe anxiety I completely withdrew from all my social groups I became really self-conscious I wasn't turning up to college that actually I was like this is not me and um, I need to talk to somebody about it so yeah, it was probably about the age of 17 and I went to my GP to speak to them. I was really scared. I was really scared talking about it for the first time. I kind of thought that I was broken. I thought there was something wrong with me that wasn't gonna be able to be repaired. I think it almost felt like it was set in stone or something like that, that you know, the minute I said, I'm not doing well, like I am not okay, like I'm really not coping. I kind of had like no awareness that things could be different or that you know that even talking about it was the first step towards um things starting to change looking back on it i think i really thought that i was kind of like waving a white flag or like admitting defeat and that by talking about it for the first time um that that was kind of it really for me which is really sad to think that i just thought that it was game over um and obviously now i know that is not true and yeah it's been a long long process that's been nine years since that like first conversation happened but yeah the amount of good stuff that has happened since and the amount of change that's happened in my life as a result of actually kind of owning the fact that I wasn't okay and that my mental health was not in a good place. Um, it all started from, from that moment, really. So to recap for Time to Talk, there's a lot of different ways and a lot of different people that you can speak to if you feel like you need to. Poppy spoke to a policeman, Vic spoke to a GP, James journaled, Stu talked to his coach, I spoke to my nan. The reality is that there may be only one way that feels comfortable for you and whatever is the most comfortable is definitely going to be the best way to do it. I encourage you on the 6th of February on Time to Talk Day to really think if that this is something that you need to do and you feel like you need to talk to someone try and think about what is the most comfortable way you could do it. Maybe you do just need to spend some time in your room and just write something down in the journal or do what I'm doing right now and speak to a camera and really just address it and name it. And that may be easier than speaking to family or friends. However, for someone else, it may feel like you need to speak to your mum or your dad or your grandparents or your brother or your sister or your best friend or your neighbour or your teacher. As I said, there's so many different people you can speak to. But just getting it out there in the open will definitely make you feel a lot better. So let's remember 6th February, time to talk. However, we appreciate that talking is really hard.